Part B of this exercise has us just do this again, except for now we're dealing with a two-tailed test, not a right-tailed test. So if we're talking about the Z, we want the area in both of those tails to be less than total 0 0.01, which means an individual tail will have 0 0.005 in it. And just like before, if we want to do this for the Z distribution, it's not bad. We can just go to inverse norm. And here we actually have a left tail, so we could just type that in. So it looks like we need a negative 2.58. And this would be a positive 2.58. So we would reject if we had a z-score that was less than negative, ooh, that's terrible, less than a negative 2.58 or greater than a positive 2.58. You could express this as the absolute value of z being greater than 2.58 if you want. Um, and for the T, same business. Once you split this up, you have your two tails. Both of them are only 0 0.005. And this is a pretty great setup for our T table, right? We're gonna need a degree of freedom first, which is our N minus one or 11. But then all we have to do is match up that degree of freedom of 11 with the upper tail probability we just said was allowable. And then whatever that is, 3.106, that's going to be our acceptable. Go away, I don't care about you, sorry. Little pop up was driving me crazy. And then I forgot what I was doing. 3.106. Uh, 3.106 and negative 3.106. So again, you have the same idea if your T is greater than 3.106 or less than negative 3.106, you would reject. Anything in this other region, anything between that, we would fail to reject. Uh, and there is a calculator way to do this, though I think the table is pretty damn sweet for this because it's set up the right way. You could do inverse T. Inverse T is like inverse norm. It takes a left side probability. Um, but it does need to have your degree of freedom, so you have to tell it your degree of freedom of 11. It actually takes a while to look it up, and then it tells you 3.106. So same idea with the calculator as well.